ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm glad that uh, some of my uh, predecessing speakers uh, have opened some uh, uh, models that I will also like to talk about. Um, we have been interested in, in uh, uh, virus T cell interactions for quite a while and work on the on, uh, different systems, uh, both in vitro and in, in vivo. And I will just briefly talk about two dif different systems, one in vitro and, and then uh, one in vivo system, which relates to the uh, non-human primate model of AIDS. So <clears throat> what, uh, um, what was interesting for us is that uh, certain viruses uh, uh, can infect T cells, so especially CD4 T cells, and, and, what, what, and studying what it does to the T cell um, is uh, something that uh, is in certain areas extensive, like HIV. In some areas, it's sort of marginal thing. And we have been working on both the uh, H in the HIV field and also in the uh, uh, herpes virus field. So uh, thus, I will be talking about uh, HIV and, and varicell zoster virus. Um, it has been known that um, there are viruses that uh, infect T cells and, and can perturb the, uh, their signaling and uh, apoptosis. Uh, some of the uh, viruses uh, can have both the uh, indirect and direct effect uh, on, the, on the cells, meaning that the direct effect being infection of the cell and in indirect effect being uh, the presence of the virus and interaction of virus-derived proteins in, uh, with, with cell receptors. And it's known very well, for example, about GP120 from HIV that uh, just the presence of defective virus particles <coughs> or GP120 in, in, the, uh, um, in, the, in blood or elsewhere can uh, seriously affect CD4 T cell signaling. And uh, at the same time, uh, there is, uh, there is a, a activation induced cell death, which in the immune system uh, serves to be sort of a, uh, a stop sign for the activated uh, immune response to, to stop in order not to really uh, go on and on. And, uh, and there are a certain infections that lead to chronic activation of the immune system, uh, for example, HIV being one of them. So uh, with the uh, apoptosis area, we <coughs> were uh, interested in this particular uh, signaling cascade, which starts here, and this doesn't really work, but oh, not really. So. Um, for, for the T cell, it starts with the uh, activation signal, which comes from the APC, uh, antigen presenting cell, which engages uh, both the uh, antigen receptor, which is TCR for the T cell, and, and needs, to, uh, uh, needs to engage some core receptor in order for the activation to go on. Then the signal goes through uh, various cascades, but this one is one of the major ones that goes through uh, PI3K and then uh, goes through AKT kinase, which is sort of a center of various signaling that uh, has uh, a lot to say for the apoptosis or, uh, or cell activation. It has several, uh, several phosphorylation sites. Uh, the two of uh, those that we were interested in are here. And then it signals uh, downstream. Again, this is not exhausting. Uh, uh, exhausting list of the downstream effectors, but GSK3 beta being one, one of the uh, signaling uh, molecules. And then, uh, interestingly enough, there have been reports recently about um, prostaglandins and COX2 signaling uh, having also effects uh, for uh, in the cell death and, and transcription area. So, so this is the area that we have been interested in. Um, so first, uh, what I want to talk about are herpes viruses and VZV, uh, especially because that's the area that is not very uh, well published in. Uh, there are some publications that show that you can uh, have VZV infecting CD4 T cells, and it's probably happening in vivo as well. 
and thus we were uh, interested in looking at different um, <coughs> subtypes or uh, clades of VZV <coughs> and their effect on the uh, CD4 T cell well-being. Uh, this uh, phylogenetic tree uh, just serves one thing to show you that there are <coughs> different um, clades. Uh, they are usually geographically, uh, geographically restricted. The Japanese clade is uh, uh, obviously uh, from uh, Eastern Asia. Then there are uh, E1 and E2 clades, which are very common in Europe. And then there are these uh, M1, M2 clades that are some sort of a mix between these two. Um, so what we did, uh, we, um, uh, we had peripheral blood from uh, three, uh, three donors, uh, from human blood. Uh, isolated CD4 T cells and then put them in culture uh, and put uh, VZV on them and also uh, had one, some of them stimulated by CD3, CD88, 28 uh, co-stimulation and then after two days we performed flow analysis. Uh, th this is a, uh, an example of, of the flow so you can see that we have the um, FITC staining for VZV, then we have PE staining for uh, apoptosis, which was uh, done uh, by CASPE staining. And then uh, on the subpopulation, especially on, on this one here, which is double positive, we were staining for different kinases uh, from the cascade, uh, and both for um, total expression and for phosphorylation. Um, this is what we saw. Uh, just to explain the legend, um, we had um, cells that were total annexin positive, and this is uh, one of the things that we did. Uh, we did also annexin in some cases, uh, in some cases we did caspase. So we can see that most of the cultures had some cells <coughs> uh, going into cell death, but uh, here is what, what's interesting. We used two different strains, one of, uh, of VZE, one of, was the M strain, and the other one was OCA, which is a uh, vaccinating strain uh, coming from originally being isolated in Japan. And you can see that uh, both uh, the infected cells are almost uh, um, all, uh, all also being apoptotic here. Uh, when we stimulate the cells, especially with the M strain, which is, seems to be a bit more virulent, um, we uh, achieve higher, higher infection and higher apoptosis. Uh, then uh, this was an added bonus. We also used nifumic acid, which is an inhibitor of COX-2, and using that, it leads up apparently uh, to the inhibition of PGE pathway and also to the inhibition or lowering the infection and uh, lowering the apoptosis of infected cells. However, when we stimulate it with the beads, that restored the original uh, level of infection apoptosis. Uh, looking at this group as opposed to this group, we can see that different uh, clades have different propensity to infect the cells, so the M strain apparently is more virulent for T cells as opposed to the vaccination or castrain. Uh, this is just to explain the uh, inhibitors that we used through the, uh, through the um, experiments. Nifumic acid was used to inhibit COX. Then we had um, in some of the next uh, following experiments, we have this inhibitor that inhibits PI3K, and then we had lithium chloride, which inhibits GSK3 beta. Um, this is just a, a transposition of, of the pre, of previous uh, chart into the logarithmic scale, so you can see better the, um, the differences between uh, the really low infection and, and higher infection. So <clears throat> what we did next was to, uh, we uh, took another three donors and infected um, uh, CD4 T cells with VZV and, and stimulated them. Uh, here the, the legend is ACT means activated VZV varicella zoster, so these are non, uh, these are negative, double negative cells. Uh, 
visive infected, only activated and activated and infected. And we looked at these uh, two um, kinases in total expression, which would be these two always uh, columns, and then we looked at phosphorylation. Um, here, one needs to say that um, while in AKT case the phosphorylation is active, <coughs> um, leads to activation of the of the enzyme in GSK3 beta case, the phosphorylated form is inactive. So what we could see here when we activated, we always got higher phosphorylation of the kinases right here. And interestingly enough, uh, if we activated and in infected the cells, the phos uh, dephosphorylation was um, even higher. So there was a synergy between the VZV infection and uh, activation. Uh, when we, excuse me, when we uh, looked at the uh, effect of the um, PA3K inhibitor, clearly, uh, once again, the PA3K inhibition, for some reason, uh, led to uh, higher activation of, of the AKT kinase, uh, uh, <coughs> which led us to believe that uh, PI3K inhibition by itself should not really uh, <clears throat> lead to that, so the VZV was uh, that part that was activating the cells from inside uh, independently for, from PI3K. This uh, is the same experiment using uh, lithium chloride. Uh, there the uh, inhibition of, of GSK3 beta uh, does not really lead to that massive activation. However, there is activation of the AKT, um, AKT signaling. So the conclusion from this part is that uh, the VZV apparently infects CD4 T cells, but the level of infection is dependent on the virulence of the, of the virus or on the clade that one uses. Um, infection of CD4 T cells leads to uh, the increase in apoptosis, uh, uh, and those cells that are VZV positive are usually also apoptotic. Um, inhibition of the prostaglandin pathway uh, clearly uh, decreases VZV infectivity or ability of VZV to infect the cells and uh, decreases also uh, apoptosis. And, uh, the infection leads to the upregulation of the AKT phosphorylation independent of the PI3K stimulatory pathway. On the contrary, the inhibition of GSK3 beta is not circumvented by VZV uh, and activation, so uh, that uh, inhibition uh, sort of stops the uh, effect of VZV. So that was the first part, and then the second part I promised was the SIV or HIV uh, in vivo experiment. Uh, we've already heard about um, using macaques for uh, SIV studies. Uh, what we were doing <coughs> a couple of years ago, uh, what we started doing was to look at these monkeys that when you infect them with um, SIV, uh, they uh, uh, clearly develop a disease that uh, is similar to human AIDS, but there are also these monkeys and many other ones that are uh, natural hosts for uh, the SIV and they harbor, uh, for example, these guys harbor fairly high uh, uh, levels of virus and, and uh, tolerate it very well. So we use these two models to compare <coughs> the uh, SIV infection of uh, CD4 T cells and uh, the levels of uh, activation and apoptosis. Uh, it was shown before, that's, not, that's nothing new, that in rhesus macaques that are positive for SIV, the, uh, there is increased apoptosis of CD4 T cells uh, in the peripheral blood. And we had uh, publications before that showed uh, on the comparison studies that were done between these two species and SIV uh, effects on them that GSK3 beta was one of the kinases that was really dysregulated in the infection. And so that, that was really the original um, push that made us uh, 
made us interested in the AKT GSK3 pathway. So uh, um, we pretty much performed the same experiment, uh, but uh, with the difference being that in this case we did not infect cells in vitro, but we used uh, cells from uh, SIV infected monkeys. So. <clears throat> Uh, when we looked at these, uh, and especially in the AKT area, because at that point uh, there was really no uh, antibody uh, for flow for GSK3, <clears throat> so we had to do that uh, by Western blots, and in, in that uh, um, effect we couldn't really discriminate between different CD4 T cell subpopulations. So what we, uh, but what we saw was that <clears throat> there was uh, certainly uh, a difference between <clears throat> uh, between the activated cells and SIV, in SIV positive monkeys in rhesus monkeys, and there was not much really difference in uh, either uh, cells from uh, Surimenge bees that were uh, SIV positive or negative. So that was the first difference that we could see. Um, then. Uh, the other difference uh, we could see was that the, one of the phosphorylation sites uh, was also uh, differently activated in uh, SIV positive rhesus monkeys. In this case, we uh, were able to discriminate between central memory, effector memory, and naive cells, and we could uh, really see that uh, there is a sizable difference in uh, <clears throat> activated cells that were activated again by CD3, CD28 binding and uh, cells that were not activated. And then uh, when we looked at the uh, activation induced cell death, uh, in this case also by annexin 5 staining, so that means we took the cells, activated them, we could really see uh, nicely in this case the columns uh, reflect different uh, cells from different monkeys with indication of, of the number of the monkeys we had. So we could clearly see that there were really differences between uh, positive uh, uh, Surimenge bees and rhesus monkeys that, uh, in cells that were activated by C3C28. And these differences in uh, AICD were uh, highly statistically significant. So uh, to conclude this part of, of the talk, uh, what we saw was, the <clears throat> and I didn't show that because, as I said, this was done by Western blood, <clears throat> but it was shown in one of our previous pa papers that GSK3 beta transcription is reduced not only at the message level, but also at the uh, level of protein expression. Uh, and while the baseline levels of uh, total AKT and uh, phosphorylated AKT uh, on threonine 308 are comparable uh, levels of the serine 473, which is the other phosphorylation site, are significantly lower in Surimenge bees. So these are the monkeys that don't get sick compared to rhesus macaques. And it was something that uh, is not trivial because uh, it, it it is thought that uh, one needs the phosphorylation on both, in both sides in order to uh, see some effect. So uh, this disbalance in phosphorylation is, in our opinion, one, one of the reasons why uh, some of the differences in AACD uh, might be happening. The stimulation of CD4 T cells uh, uh, leads to increase in AACD and also uh, that the hallmark is increased of uh, phosphorylated AKT in SIV positive rhesus macaques. And uh, what we saw was um, the differences, what we saw were both species and subpopulation specific. I refer to the um, uh, flow data that were <coughs> uh, discriminating between naive central memory and effector memory cells. And that, that, was, uh, that was the second part of my talk. Uh, the data was, was um, uh, sort of uh, generated by uh, people, some people here at Emory where I worked for quite a while. And uh, then uh, some people from my lab uh, uh, now back in Czech and we 
uh, receive support from NIH and from some Czech founding agencies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.